my death was greatly exaggerated. Hey everyone. <coughs> oh, uh, still have this, uh, but uh, I'm better now. So, right, hey everybody. Uh, we're today looking at a Google Nest Hub. Pretty neat device, right? This is a generation one. The only reason I bought it used was because uh, uh, basically to use it as a wireless speaker, more or less, and not really deal with the whole uh, Google Hub, uh, you know, functionality and uh, Google Assistant and so on, just basically a display that I can play some music on. Uh, it can be used, you know, just like a kitchen radio, yeah, right, like in previous years. But the main problem I have with it is that it is wired. Um, it comes with a uh, comes with a power supply. It doesn't have a, any kind of battery. I'm aware that there is a, basically a Google tablet. It basically has a docking station you can use, it, but you know, uh, not for less than fifty dollars, right? Uh, and here uh, it is a very non-standard connection. Uh, looking at the power supply, if you take a peek here, I'm not sure if that's visible because Google made sure that it isn't. Uh, you can see here the pinout. The middle is positive, uh, the sleeve is negative. And if you take a peek here, it says that its output is 14 volts, 1.1 amps for some reason. Very weird voltage. They Probably it would run on 12. Uh, anyway, um, hopefully we can do something about it. All right, so let's talk uh, block diagrams. Uh, we have your power supply uh, from uh, from the socket. Uh, so currently what you have is AC to DC converter. And uh, then that brings 14 volts Oh, plus 14 volts uh, that would be ground and, and so on uh, and then this goes to your device to, to the nest hub kind of you know okay if you're okay with being tethered to the socket alternatively what you can do uh, that's the first thing I thought up of uh, you take your power bank so you have your DC power source DC uh, that gives you 5 volts uh, on this line here and then you have a, instead of uh, something like this, you have DC to DC converter and uh, that will bring you 14 volts. Uh, it will basically increase the voltage um, and you, you can power your device. I don't really enjoy any of those two things, uh, uh, but we will talk about this second option. But instead what I'm planning to do is take a wall socket uh, then bring it to a very standard USB power supply um, that this is a very simple AC-DC converter uh, that will bring me 5 volts here's my 5 volts then uh, charging circuitry uh, lithium ion uh, charging uh, oops, that should be a G uh, charging circuitry. Then I have my let's say uh, well let, let, let's put it like a single cell to put it very simplistic. Uh, we don't really need to go into the details. And then uh, instead of that, DC to DC converter. And now I have 14 volts, uh, and now I can power my device. So. If I remove this part, uh, I still disconnect here uh, my power supply. I still have my device powered. I can bring it uh, with me anywhere I want. I already measured the, uh, the average consumption whenever playing videos on uh, Nesca, at least uh, this version. So that, that's uh, yeah, that, that's a generation one. Um, not sure if it says here anywhere. Nope. So that's the smaller uh, of the two, at least. Uh, so the standard consumption is 0.6 amps at uh, five volts if you measure it here. Uh, so let's put an amp meter here. Uh, so only this, so in practice, instead of uh, what it talks here on the, on the power brick, uh, it talks about about 15 watts. That is quite a lot in practice. What, uh, 
what it takes uh, from here is around uh, 3 watts, not, not a lot. Uh, so that, that should be alright. Uh, it means that most standard circuitry for charging lithium ion cell, uh, cells, the cheapest one uh, you can get, it looks like this. And it will bring you, uh, so it's actually in, in this place exactly, in the diagram, it will bring you uh, one amp uh, here. So you can still watch your videos uh, at the output and at the same time charge this lithium ion cell or bank of cells uh, at uh, around uh, 400 milliamp hours, which depending on the capacity may or may not be enough, but this is the cheapest solution available right now. So these are the items that you would need for the whole mode I will be talking today. Uh, you can alternatively just skip uh, just the DC-DC converter, so starting from left. TP4056 one amp USB to lithium ion charger circuit. Uh, some lithium ion batteries like these, um, I will be using this specifically. Um, barrel plug. So, this is really important that you have some alternative barrel plug. So, you can also cannibalize the current charger, but kinda I recommend looking somewhere uh, for a bar barrel plug similar to that. Uh, it's uh, 3.5 millimeters uh, on the thicker side and inside it's one millimeter uh, in the opening. This isn't quite perfect, it's not long enough, it's a little bit more wide open and a little bit thinner, but overall it works and this is what's important. Uh, possibly, maybe some old charger, you can cut the cable off it and, and use it this way, uh, so you don't actually break your uh, Google provided charger that is you know, functioning well. Uh, okay, so I have this, and oh yeah, and uh, the DC to DC step up, step up, this is very important, step up converter, because it is kind of important, since I will be providing it with uh, power from the cells directly, I kind of recommend using uh, some kind of cell protection circuitry uh, after the cells, so it will disconnect cells in case of any issues, or they will discharge too deeply, uh, because uh, what uh, what happens if you completely discharge these cells, uh, it will cause the uh, nest hub to boot loop. Basically, it will power on for five seconds, turn off, power on, and so on. Uh, it's probably because the step up converter cannot keep up uh, with the current uh, that it requires. Uh, so it is very important that it is a step up converter. You will notice that step down converters are a lot cheaper and uh, the output range is also important that it will reach up up to 14 volts and also the input range is within 3.5 volts and up uh, so it can deal uh, with uh, standard lithium ion output battery uh, output voltage of the battery mm, and so in this case theoretically if you just connect the cable i have here to this and then you, instead of connecting batteries, then you just plug in the uh, USB cable. Uh, you're basically done. Uh, you can use any kind of box to cover that. But at the same time, you could also use the type of box uh, after some kind of power bank that had two batteries here. I'm pretty sure, yep, batteries like that. Uh, you could use them, uh, for example, keep one battery uh, put here uh, some of the circuitry and put here some of the circuitry wired up, have a USB charging and then a uh, short cable uh, just to connect to the uh, um, uh, to the NAS hub and that would be it. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, it, these boxes like that would be a good idea. Uh, for my purposes are I just printed one for myself. I will make sure to provide you with the files, yeah, so you can also print it, but this is specifically built for these cells because this is what I had uh, and I will just glue it in. Uh, I will show you uh, this box uh, in a moment. So since we have everything ready, I already pre-connected uh, the USB charging or for the batteries. So this is already connected. The way you connect this, uh, you just, you know, USB side, uh, USB C secure in this case, uh, and then you have just battery connections, battery minus, battery plus. You connect that uh, to your battery bank or a single battery 
uh, in this case since these are kind of old they won't keep us great capacity and they are uh, usually being charged during the whole day so that's not really an issue but uh, keeping uh, batteries in a bank like that without uh, making sure that each and every one is top up correctly may cause uh, them to have a limited lifespan in case one of these will fail uh, so since you know that um, then you connect the output uh, to the DC to DC converter and now you have to adjust it this is really important uh, you need to just make sure that once you connect uh, let me just connect the original power supply so we have minus on the uh, on the sleeve and inside there is a plus so if you take a look uh, can you read it? Yeah, you can. 13.84 on output. So, and the polarity it matches here. Uh, this is a minus, and this is a plus. So I already pre-adjusted that. The important part is you get more or less the same result. Uh, lower the voltage is actually better because if you overdo it, you do a 14 point something maybe it causes some issues I don't know uh, if you have too low voltage it will simply not turn on the device if you have too much well you can say goodbye to it and this is the knob to adjust it uh, it's a tiny potentiometer uh, you will be able to use a screwdriver to adjust it these are all bit dumb um, and what you may notice is that you adjusted the voltage uh, and then you disconnect and then connect it again and the voltage isn't right so the reason for that is uh, because there is no load so there is nothing to um, to discharge this capacitor it if you bring the voltage down it may at some point uh, cause it to show a higher voltage than it will normally output on the load so my suggestion is uh, bring it to 3 volts or something like that at the lowest possible level um, disconnect this uh, because probably you won't have it sold soldered directly when you will be uh, setting this up and then connect it afterwards see what's the voltage and then adjust it uh, by going to by going up basically it won't be higher than what it's showing and then try disconnect connect it again see if it all matches and then you should be good uh, so then we have our setup we have our uh, alternative cable, uh, so that's all good. I will be putting that all in my uh, box here uh, that uh, I have printed and uh, we will uh, see how it works in a moment. The whole cable inside I didn't really have to but maybe I will be using this for the future or whatever uh, here's the connector I with this case I can pull it off uh, here's my charging LED so I can disconnect it by the way it never ch changes blue uh, if, if you keep it connected so it will never fully charge because it will take still a lot of uh, a lot of current just to run the uh, nest hub but if you have it disconnected it will go blue after some time uh, okay so let's connect this um, and I actually went really hard with the hot glue here so as you probably saw uh, all you need to actually do is just put the plug in and just stand it there you go uh, it's starting up it will start completely on a moment but before that let's close it off since I have the glue gun ready I have a cover uh, for the button here That's 
pretty well. So we have our little box, we have the USB-C charger, we have the cable that will power actually our uh, nice hub, so yeah, it's just connected like so. You should be still able to see the red LED shining through. I'm not sure if that's super visible, but that's pretty okay with me. Through the 3D printed material, you'll be able to see it. And let's stand it up. Uh, here we have it and connect it. You don't really have to start it with my USB. Uh, you just have your wireless nest hub. You can take it to the garden, take it to your grandma, take it anywhere there's Wi-Fi you can connect it to. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you guys next time.